It's, it's so exciting. I mean, I dreamed about this day for so long, you know. We've worked so hard to get here and uh, it's lovely. I mean, we shot this uh, in very rough times for everyone uh, and uh, being here with you, having the chance to enjoy the show in the cinema with people, it's just uh, uh, amazing. Uh, it couldn't be better. I'm excited also, there's a lot of Spanish-speaking people around here, uh, which I love. Uh, it's nice to be doing it in LA. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah, I see this as like four films, you know? I see this as four films. We've, we've worked really hard. Uh, I don't know, this is new for me. This long format is new. I, I, I really enjoyed it. The, the opportunities, the freedom you find as an actor, the chance to explore stuff in a film you would never be able to explore, it's amazing. 
Tony Gilroy is such a brilliant writer and he really created this huge world where characters intertwine and, and with that you're able to explore your character so much more throughout the 12 episodes. And I feel like, especially with my character, I feel like who you meet at the beginning and, and who you end up seeing towards the end of her journey is a completely different character and I, and I could say the same about every single character. Uh, it's pretty thrilling to have uh, the galaxy far, far away come here and be so near to all of us uh, here in Hollywood, California. Um, I'm really excited to see the premiere tonight. Well, I mean, what Tony Gilroy did with uh, this beloved story of uh, Cassie Nandor, who I think is one of the more beloved characters um, from, from the franchise, is uh, really dig deep, uh, show an emotional core to him and, and, um, and all the characters surrounding him that I think uh, will feel really fresh uh, because it, it, it really, really goes to the complexities of what does it mean to become uh, someone that's willing to sacrifice everything for, for the rebellion. And, and that's the story he said to tell, and I think he pulled it off. And, um, I think they've got a great adventure in store for them. It's so exciting for me. I, I, I actually have a photo. It's a shame I haven't got my phone on me. I've got a photo on my phone from 1983 of me dressed as Darth Vader after seeing uh, Return of the Jedi. It's the first movie I ever saw. I have felt an affinity with the dark side from that age, you know, from the age of six. I'm still going. So uh, it's an unbelievably special moment for me. It feels like my life's come full circle, you know. And a lot of people will say Rogue One was like a sort of, almost like a wartime thriller, like a wartime action movie. So I think it, again, it fits, it fits in with that too, you know, like that feeling of like, mystery, intrigue, adventure, all the things you want from Star Wars, but with that, that dark edge, which I think is what made Rogue One stand alone. It's, it's perfect in that respect. It's really a privilege to be with this fabulous cast, the intensity of performances, the excitement about the whole project and Tony's leadership and enthusiasm. So I, I've loved every minute of it. I think the fact that the relationships are so real, so complex, so confusing, so boundaryless, so uh, I think that's unusual in such a thing. Well, it is particularly exciting because we started it before COVID and it was just such a long journey, huge shutdown. And it, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just been a process and it was full of amazing creative collaborations and amazing people. Yeah, and it is just wonderful to finally get here. And I'm so looking forward to seeing it on a big screen and seeing all, everyone's hard work up there. Yeah, awesome, can't wait. So it takes place in the sort of, events leading up to the film Rogue One and um, it's effectively the story of how Cassian Andor becomes the character he is in Rogue One. By the end of this series that's where, that's where we'll get to. So, yeah. This is a really special series. I mean going back to Rogue One and it was a movie that all of us really genuinely were surprised by the response and the fact that we've now created this series. It's a spy thriller in the Star Wars universe. It's pretty exciting. Well, I actually started working with Tony years ago when I did Born with him. And I think Tony is just uniquely suited to be writing stories like this that are so full of tension and intrigued. And, and the fact that he's brought that into Star Wars and the building of the rebellion and being able to individualize each of the people that are associated with that, giving us real insight on Cassian and Andor, Andor, giving us more insight on Momothma. I mean, all of these building blocks that led to the rebellion, it's, it's pretty great. Yeah, that, I think that's what people are going to be surprised by. You go into Coruscant and you get a real insight as to where people live and, and you know, how they make a living, what they do. And the fact that they're so, you know, oppressed by the empire and realizing they've got to rise up and do something about it. And the banding together of, you know, the various factions. It's, it, it, it's going to feel very different than anything I think we've done before, which is really exciting. To actually be here now with all of the fans who are so desperate to, to see it and showing so much love and appreciation it's amazing. 
Well, I think Andor has capitalized completely on what Rogue One promised, which is a really adult, human, grittier, rawer exploration of the Star Wars universe, but about real human people making real sacrifices. What Tony Gilroy wrote, I mean, when I first read the, the initial scripts when we were talking about the project and the character, I was like, I mean, it's all here on the page. It's so, it's so psychologically driven. It's so emotionally driven. You get, you don't get archetypes with Tony. He writes real people. And there's light and shade. There's, there's good and bad in everybody. It sets up so many different things, and the show itself is so epic, I would say. That's sort of my feeling on it. Uh, so many different things, uh, so many different elements. Musically, for me, there were so many different things I had to explore. Um, and everybody gave me a lot of freedom, which was really wonderful. You know, from Tony, Tony Gilroy, Kathy Kennedy, everyone was fully supportive the whole way. So there's a lot of new themes. You know, I really, uh, I'm very... I'm very enamored of a lot of the stuff that we did, and and Tony, Tony and I worked every single week for literally years. On this. So Tony lives about 11 blocks from me in New York City. So we were we, we spent a lot of time together, and uh, you know it's really a lot of hands-on work. You know, um, every episode has its own musical. Feeling. You know, there's a lot of, as we proceed, it's con things are constantly evolving. Um, so there's, yeah, the scope is, is pretty massive, I would say. That's my best way of describing it, I think, yeah. Oh my God, it is so exciting to finally share it, you know, with, you know, at least part of the world today and then the wider world next week. It's been a long time coming and we are really excited and very proud to finally share what we have worked on for the last, oh God, two and a half years and more. <laughs> I mean, Tony Gilroy would always bring his very own voice to this, to anything he does. And I think, you know, Rogue One already being a very specific, you know, part of the uh, franchise, you know, was kind of the jumping point for us to go five years back and, and see, you know, where the story began for Cassianando. And I think it was bound to, and, and had to really reflect Tony's quite unique voice. And I think we have achieved it. We are really proud. And I hope the fans will agree. God, there's so much to discover. It's such a complex story, and and um, with a huge ensemble cast, and I cannot wait for them to get a glance of, you know, what Cassian Ando's journey into Rogue One, how it began, and where, you know, and how it is developing. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, it's it's utterly surreal. I, I watched Star Wars when I was six years old. Uh, and as soon as I knew that somebody had made Star Wars, I knew that I wanted to be that person. And I've been like trying to be a filmmaker ever since then, like, and, like leading up. And I didn't know it would be leading up to this moment where I'd be actually standing on Hollywood Boulevard on a red carpet, about to watch three of my episodes. It's really epic storytelling. I think that Tony doesn't deal in black and white. He really writes for the grayscales of humanity and the human condition. So you really don't know who you're dealing with when you're meeting these characters, you don't know whether they're good, they're bad, they're, they're good people who do bad things, or they're bad people who do good things. It's going to take the audience into a really interesting moral territory. I think it's a real exploration into, into areas of Star Wars. Like it's a Star Wars we've, like we've seen no other. We've been in a cave, it feels like, for the three years. Seriously, like we've been hiding out for three years making this show, and here we are hopefully turning into a butterfly tonight. Um, it's, I, it's really, it's, an, um, you know, and people talk about it, it's an emotional experience to come out and, and expose yourself after three years and to have so many people excited about seeing it. Um, it's, it's really special.